So, at this point in time in the game, um, we are in our open world. We're on the South Island, uh, Southern Gotham. Our open world is more than twice the size of that in Arkham City. It's broken into three main pieces. There's South Gotham, there's North Gotham, and then there's Gotham Pioneer Bridge that connects the two together. Of course, there are other environments that you'll visit uh, on top of that throughout the game, but that makes up the major landmass of our open world. Now, in uh, South Gotham, obviously there are those gangs and those thugs that I talked about earlier. Um, their job, basically, is to kind of create chaos, to, to, to do the kinds of things that are going to put pressure on the city that the assassins think is going to lure Batman out. They then deliver the killing blow, they collect their 50 million dollars, and away to Fiji they go. And so, there's a really interesting element about this character, the, the fantasy of being Batman. One of the things that I've always sort of really liked about him. Um, why does he do what he does, right? Why on this night with eight assassins, the deadliest people in the, in the DC Universe trying to kill him, why does he go out into the open world? Why does he try and save this city? Why bother? Why not just stay home? Why not just sit in the back cave and relax and you know wake up next morning and open his Christmas presents? It's because he is Batman, because he swore that oath to protect the city from the villains, from the criminal element that would prey on it, that would oppress it, that would that would that would take advantage of it, that he is willing to risk his own life, he's willing to sacrifice his own well-being, even in the face of these incredible odds, in order to go out there, stop these crimes in progress, keep these people from preying on the innocents, and generally do what Batman does. So there's something very special about that, and in an elegant way, it ties to the, you know, the kind of fantasy of a great open world game, right? You've got your main narrative, you've got your main objective, the assassins to defeat, black mask to find, but then in the world you've got puzzles to solve, you've got collectibles to find, you've got side missions to do, you've got enemies to defeat. That marries very nicely to the fact that Batman is going to save this city. He's going to become that Dark Knight, even in the face of the challenges that he's facing. So, at this point in time in the game, he has figured out, he thinks, where Black Mask is. And he's just completed a very important piece of detective work, using our all-new case file system to really put you, the player, in the, the shoes of being Batman and kind of cracking these cases yourself, figuring out who did it, why they did it, and where you can find them. So in order to find Black Mask, he needs this one last piece of information, and unfortunately that piece of information is only available in the, the actual Gotham City Police Department headquarters, in their, their, their main servers, the, uh, is stored the National Criminal Database. And by hacking into the National Criminal Database, he's going to get the information that he needs in order to go up and find Black Mask. Now, I mentioned earlier, right, later on in his career, Batman would just call up Gordon and be like, Hey, what's up, Gordo? Yo, check it out. I need this information. Gordon would give it to him. Problem solved. Everything's done. At this point in time, Gordon will shoot him or put him in the in the, in jail if Batman, you know, so much as shows his face. So in order to get this information, he has to break in to the police department and steal the information. And, and this really kind of reinforces just how much at odds these two parts of the law are, right? There's law and there's order, and they have not yet made friends with each other. Now, in order to infiltrate the Gotham City Police Department, Batman is being encouraged to head back to the Batcave by his trusty friend, Alfred. So let's jump in the Batwing and zip back to the Batcave. It'll give me a little bit of an opportunity to talk about the Batcave, talk about some of the cool features of the Batcave, the relationship with Alfred, why that's important to us, before we head back into the open world um, and, try and, and try and make our way to the Police Department. Now, when we first started Batman on Origins, one of the very first things we knew is we wanted to create the Batcave. We wanted a place that players would come back to, both for narrative as well as gameplay reasons, that gives you that fantasy of being Batman and, let's face it, the ultimate man cave, right? Like, this is the man cave we kind of all wish we had. I certainly know I do. It's just missing a really big screen TV. 
Uh, and so the, in the Batcave, there's lots of different elements. There's Easter eggs to explore. There's you know Alfred. There's a wonderful conversation system with Alfred where throughout the game, you can talk to him again and again and again. He'll share knowledge with you. He'll share ideas, insights into you. Some little Easter eggs are there as well. Um, there's also the workbench that we're going to make our way to in a minute that'll allow us to get a new gadget called the Concussion Detonator that Alfred is encouraging us to use in our attempts to infiltrate the Gotham City Police Department. Now the reason why he wants us to get that, because like most Batman gadgets, it's non-lethal, and he thinks it'll be very helpful in you know, dealing with the police in a way that doesn't leave, let's say, too much lasting damage. Now this is interesting. Alfred is telling Batman, don't hurt the cops. And Batman responds throughout the early part of this game, you know, trust me, Alfred, I, I know what I'm doing, I don't need your help. Um, there's, there's tension there. This is not a relationship that is fully formed. This is not a kind of partnership that has evolved to the level that we know they eventually evolved to, where Alfred is quite literally Batman's most trusted confidant. And you'll see that playing out a little bit more throughout the presentation. Now, one other thing I want to talk about very quickly um, in the Batcave, one of my favorite features is the training gym. So, we've talked a little bit earlier about Batman's evolution. He has to go from being just a masked vigilante to truly becoming the Dark Knight. Now, a lot of the players who are going to play this game, let's face it, a lot of them will have played Arkham City. And they'll have finished Arkham City two years ago, probably, and uh, they'll be decent. They'll be very decent at the game. But one of the things we learned in creating this is just how few people understand how deep the free flow combat system is, how deep the Predator and the navigation systems are. They finished Arkham City, and then maybe even they played it a second time, and maybe even they did some challenge maps, and they're still just sort of scratching the surface. They're not yet that black belt in being Batman or the true Dark Knight that we want them to be. We want players to be awesome at this game before they finished it so that they can have that sort of very empowering experience of being Batman right at the heart of these sort of central, meaningful events that are taking place in our game story. And so the training gym is a wonderful opportunity to do that. You go back to the Batcave, you set up a training challenge like one of those ones that's there helping you practice against uh, a martial artist, for example, or another new enemy, or, or, or how to use a new gadget like the concussion detonator. And you practice, and in practicing you get experience points that allow you to upgrade your character so that Batman's evolution and the player's evolution are increasing in lockstep. Just as Batman is becoming the Dark Knight, the player's getting better and better at the game by practicing before they have to go out in the world and do it for real. Now with the Batcave taken care of, with our concussion detonator acquired, let's jump into the Batwing, head back out into the open world as we make our way towards the Gotham City Police Department. Now I want to talk a little bit about the size of the world here. I mentioned earlier it's twice the size of the map in Arkham City. If we look on the far right there, we see a ship. That's the final offer. Um, we've talked a little bit about the final offer at a couple of presentations. Um, there was uh, some preview videos that went online uh, a little while ago about the final offer. It's where you'll find the Penguin. It's where you'll have one major boss fight against Deathstroke. It's a wonderful location. We move further down towards the south. We reach the Gotham Pioneer Bridge. If any of you were at Gamescom in, Gamescom in Germany, um, we showed a very small fraction of the Gotham Pioneer Bridge. It's where you will eventually encounter another one of the assassins, Firefly. If we continue on down towards the south, we move a little bit over to the east, we have the Gotham Royal Hotel. Two huge towers that you know, like rise way up into the, to the, the skyline of the city, the most luxurious uh, hotel in all of Gotham. Uh, this was the main focus leading up to the Gotham Royal Hotel, was the main focus of our E3 presentation, in case you saw that. And if we make our way down towards the south, at the far tip of the um, South Gotham, we see the Gotham City Police Department headquarters, and we will use a fast travel point in order to get access to that, um, using the Batwing, navigating our way over there, and then eventually infiltrate the GCPD.